I do want to take the time to appreciate Rafinha and also Mikhail Fayet. This is going to be a very long video, but I first do want to talk about Rafinha because it says here, according to Carmen Torres, that within Barcelona, they are happy with Rafinha because of his recent performances and with his value now being on the rise. It will take a big offer to sell him. The player, though, has always stood firm in his desire to stay. So let's talk about this, right? Because look, like I have said in the most previous videos, I was talking about Rafinha over and over again, but this is going to be a video dedicated to Rafinha. Rafinha has six goals and 10 assist so far this season. He has went through three different injuries, okay? Not one, not two, but three different injuries. He missed a total of 12 games that he could have been available for. Injury-wise, he is having his worst season ever within the past four years. But funny enough, he is on track on beating his best season of his career. And I'm talking about goals and assist-wise. Last season is currently his best one, which was with Barcelona. He was involved in a total of 22 goals, okay? 22. I think that his second best season was like 19 goals involved with leads but as of now his best one is 22 goals that he was involved in, which was last season Rafinha only needs to be involved in seven more goals in these next two months and he beats his record keep in mind that again he went through three different injuries and he's very close on beating his best season yet last season where he had his best season he had no injuries so can you imagine what would have happened in this season if he never got through any serious injuries like at all and he was 100 healthy imagine the type of numbers he could have displayed by this time maybe he could have have had 12 goals and 15 assists by this point but in the end it could not happen and i do think that in the next season i would like to imagine that with the current form and the mentality that he does carry with him and assuming that he is going to be 100 healthy rafinha is going to be a monster for fc barcelona i do think that this is what deco and joel Laporta are projecting and why i believe that the brazilian is going to be having continuity with the club and another reason why he has been so successful recently has been because he can now play as a left winger something that he could not do before when he first came to Barcelona. I remember in the first season, Xavi Hernandez opted for Rafinha to play as a left winger, but he simply just did not look comfortable at all. He played against Bayern Munich as a left winger and he was just lost. He looked very uncomfortable. He looked disorganized. He did not know what to do. He was losing every 1v1 battle. Even a couple of days later, Rafinha told Xavi that he did not want to play in that position. But for some reason in this season, and especially in the past four to five months, he shrugged this thing off. Like he just said, okay, look, I have to perform here because La Mina Mal is becoming a monster on the right wing. And if I only limit myself to the right wing position, I'm not going to be getting a lot of chances to do what I need to do. And that is why he has been forced to accept that role, to play on the left wing 55 to 65% of the time. And Rafinha just got better as a left winger. And that is very impressive because again, like how are you going to beat someone like La Minimal, right? La Minimal as a right winger has been creating, successfully beating defenders on 1v1s or 1v2s. He knows how to make curl shots from outside the box. Like how are you going to beat that? Rafinha was only forced to play as a left winger when the Minyamal was starting or playing on the pitch and Rafinha has delivered. He is slowly becoming a great utility player because even in the game against Las Palmas, he scored as a right midfielder. So now he is showcasing that he can play as a right winger, as a right midfielder, and also as a left winger. Yes, Rafinha does have a few weaknesses here and there. Like for example, sometimes he likes to shoot the ball like over the stadium. Like he really misses the goal. Sometimes he loses a 1v1 duel. But overall, with everything else that he does give, right, defensively, scoring the goals, providing an assist, it's a net positive. And so to Rafinha, I say this, keep going, work harder. You're going to be getting the recognition that you deserve because clearly you do want that, right? So like, I know that Rafinha wants to succeed at Barcelona. I remember Xavi Hernandez subbed off Rafinha very early in the game. I think it was around five to six games ago. And he was really pissed off. Like he was really mad. He was mad because he knew that he did not really do anything to impact the game. And I remember him going to the bench and he was like punching the bench. He was looking very frustrated, like extremely frustrated. I cannot remember the last time I saw a Barcelona player do that when they got subbed off very early in the game because things were just not happening. So the passion in Rafinha is clearly there and Barcelona need players like that. And from the fan base, we really do appreciate players that are, that are very passionate about the game, that they want to succeed at the club. Deco, I assume, does favor his continuity to stay here for a third season. After all, right, he was the agent that brought Rafinha to Barcelona. And I'm assuming that Deco wants to see Rafinha succeed at the club, regardless whether Xavi Hernandez stays or not. Now, do I think that Barcelona can benefit from selling Rafinha in the summer? 
summer. Of course, right? There has been offers coming from Saudi Arabia. They are willing to offer Barcelona 80 million euros to 90 million euros for the player. And that is because of his age, because of his performances, and because there is still four years left in his contract. So of course, it's going to be extremely high. I do think that if Barcelona even wanted to, right, they can counter offer and say, we're only going to be accepting 95 million euros to 100 million euros for the player. They can do that. And Saudi Arabia would be more than happy to bring in the player for that price. They have the money. But I just don't think that Rafinha would accept this offer because of the stage that he is in in his career. Maybe at the age of 32, 33 years old, he could go to Saudi Arabia, but he is 27 years old at the prime of his career. I do think that he only wants to succeed in Europe because he wants to go to the Copa America. He wants to start for the Brazilian national team. He wants to win the Champions League, something that he has not done yet. And I can see why, again, why he would not want to go at the age of 27. You have not won a Champions League yet. Usually players who are very good win the Champions League under the age of 26 years old. Rafinha wants to be part of that list. And the only way I can see Rafinha leaving Barcelona in the summer and for all parties to agree is if a European team calls for Rafinha. And the club that I am talking about, it is Liverpool. I do think that a team like Liverpool can pay the high price for Rafinha and they can give a huge offer for Rafinha and Rafinha could accept it because in the way that I see Liverpool, I see a team that is slowly going to be saying goodbye to Salah very soon. I think that Salah does need some rest. He needs another player behind him to be a second option. Somebody like Rafinha can be the second option to Salah. Rafinha can also form a great partnership with Diaz, who is a Colombian player at Liverpool. You can just get a sense that Liverpool are going to want to restart their project in the summer because Klopp is going to be leaving. Rafinha also has Premier League experience. And so I can't see a team like Liverpool going for somebody like Rafinha and for a team like Liverpool to be attracted by Rafinha. But in the end, like I have said, I just don't think that he's going to be going anywhere. Everything is just too good at Barcelona as of now. I want to move on towards the next conversation and talk about Mikael Faya because man, let me tell you, is this center back starting to become serious business? In the past seven games, he has five goals. In the most previous goal that he has scored, he scored a match winning free kick on the 88th minute against Osasuna B. If there is one thing that Mikael Faya is good at, it is long range shots. His shots are so powerful. I'm like, oh my God, dude, like is this Komen reincarnation? Like are we seeing the second coming of Ronald Koeman? Here is going to be the story that came out today. Many big clubs in Europe are monitoring Mikael Faye and Barcelona have already received some offers. The club remains calm. In the summer with the new coach, it will be decided if he will do preseason with the first team or if he will be sold as his value is skyrocketing. What won't happen next season is that he won't play in the third or second division anymore because everybody knows that Faye is just too good for the second division or the third division. He has to see first division football, whether that's at Barcelona or in the Premier League or in the Italian League or anywhere else. There has been rumors stating that Xavi Hernandez plans on giving Faye his debut, which makes me believe that Barcelona are going to want to keep the player because if they're already planning on introducing Faye in this season to make his debut, I do think that they see Faye as the future of Barcelona's defense alongside Pau Cobarsi. And to be honest, I don't know where Barcelona is going to be placing Faye in like whichever games because in these next few games that we are going to be playing until the end of the season, right? So they're all going to be very important because we're in the brink of Barcelona maybe going over Real Madrid if they do everything 100% correct. I also don't see Faye going into any Champions League matches because it is just too competitive at the moment. Now, Faye has already done preseason with Barcelona in the first team. He was solid versus Arsenal. Do I believe that once he does return to the first team and makes his debut, could he be even better? Yes, of course. But like I have said, I just don't know which game Faye is going to be introduced because every game is important. We cannot allow for a single mistake. Now, one of the coaches that coached Faye before he came to Barcelona B wanted to speak about Mikael Faye to Mundo Deportivo and he said a few things that were very interesting and this is what he said. I called Mikael Faye a football monster from the moment I saw him. The explosiveness and power he produced in the attack or in defense are unique. Faye is a modern player. He's still young but I firmly believe he can become a great player. I really believe that Mikael Faye can contribute more to the team as a left back than as a center back. His offensive contribution in the final third of the field is enormous and he can attack the spaces behind the lines. He can penetrate with or without the ball. Faye's shooting ability is high. Both legs and his crosses reach the goal on time. I made him play as a winger before. I was very happy with his development. I firmly believe that the Barcelona coaches know what is best for him, but I just wanted to share my opinion. Defensively, he can perform steadily and stably. So it's very interesting to see that he is recommending for Faye to play as a left back like full time because he simply has the capability to do that. I do think that next season there is a defensive line where I can have right Faye as a left back. I do think that we can have a defensive line of Faye as a left back, Kubarsi and Araujo as a center back pairing with Kunde on the right back position. If the
the coach is really right on what he's saying. Because again, remember, like he coached Faye before, so he knows the player. If Faye can perform anything close to the explosiveness of Balde, that would be amazing. And so later in the statement, he also wanted to, in a way, hook up Guardiol and create those links with Barcelona because he was also a coach that worked with Guardiol before. If you guys do not know who Guardiol is, Guardiol is basically that center back that was bossed around by Messi against Argentina. You know, that game between Argentina and Croatia. He currently also does play for Manchester City. But this is what he said about Guardiol. Guardiol is technically at a very high level. His shooting is his weakest point. Faya, though, is more explosive with a better contribution in the final third of the field. He has much better shooting skills. I would like to see Guardiol as a center back and Mikael Faye as a left back on the same team. So he's basically saying like, I would like to see these two players together one day. Now, we don't know if he is referencing whether he wants to see Guardiol at Barcelona or Mikael Faye at Manchester City. So this is very interesting because I remember like a few months ago, I was talking about how Faye can be our Guardiol at Barcelona because Barcelona wanted Guardiol before. We were, we were trying to compete with Man City for his signature. And I'm like, dude, like we need a center back that can play as a left back also. Somebody who is very dynamic, versatile, can play anywhere across the defensive line. And I said that, you know, Guardiola would be the perfect player to be the backup to Alejandro Balde if he ever does get injured. But we could not compete. And then I remember when Faye came out right after and we bet it on him to become our next center back that can also play as a left back. And I'm like, okay, so Barcelona found the player. He is just simply younger and more inexperienced. And so do I think that maybe in the future we could see Guardiola join Barcelona? Maybe. I mean, he is only 22 years old. He still has a lot of time. He can come and join us at the age of 25, 26 years old and to play alongside Faye. Would I like to imagine for Faye to go to Man City? No, of course. I I, I don't I don't want to see that. I want to see Faye only succeed at Barcelona and nowhere else. And part of the reason why I'm very confident that Faye will stay no matter what happens is because Inigo Martinez is going to be leaving. Marcos Alonso is also going to be leaving. So his profile is definitely going to be needed. So that is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.